Tatu Mowi Gai, Uki. Hi everyone, welcome back. Maybe welcome for the very first time. And yes, this is the third episode of So We Want to Get Into. This is a series of videos dedicated to world cinema directors and the best entry points to getting to know more about their filmography and what kind of visual artists they're about. My first two videos have been about Claire Denis and Hong Sang Soo. Please check them out if you haven't yet. And today I am dedicating this video to the one and only Sai Ming Lang. My personal journey with this director has only begun 12 months ago, but I have seen a vast majority of his films, including quite a few of his shorts. And to be honest with you, I am ashamed of myself for not going into the director a lot sooner. But with the wonderful nudging of my dear friend Huss from A Touch of Film, I got there in the end. And basically the way that these videos go is that I'm going to share my first experience with you. Then we're gonna discuss the style and the subtext of the director. And then I'm gonna give you three recommendations of entry point films. And these will be the masterpiece or the magnum opus, as we call it. It will be the first recommendation. The second one will be my personal favorite from the director. And the third will be the all-rounder, the most accessible of that director's films. So enough introducing, let's get talking. As I mentioned, my first actual experience with Simon Lang was only 12 months ago. And the first film I actually saw from him was his latest, and that is Days. It was his actual first film since 2013. And there was a lot of hype going into the Berlin Film Festival in regards to this, because he has made a lot of shorter films and mid feature length films in this time period. And for me, I didn't really know much about his style and aesthetic. All I knew was the very quiet films, very long takes, and obviously Li Kangsheng, who is his muse, was in this film. Honestly, I was dumbstruck with the prowess and the beauty of this film. It was so well portrayed. There's no sense of subtext. There's no heavy dialogue. There's nothing. It's just quiet. And this kind of isolation is very formidable, especially in our current situation. We are all been in lockdown. The kind of sense of human connection is disappearing. And I think it really further enhanced the ambience and kind of the motif I got from days. I, I just could not believe what I was seeing because it's kind of the cinema that I've always grown to love and admire, but really Simon Lang is such a unique artist. And because of this, I continuously then try to seek more of his films. Luckily, the Criterion channel then released a few more of his films. We had Rebels of the Neon Demon, Stray Dogs was there, The Way with Cloud was there. So I really got into the flow of it. But the problem is with Simon Lang is that not all of his films are accessible because either they don't have Blu-rays or DVDs, they're only available in Asia. So it makes it quite a difficult process to complete the filmography but it's something that I'm really excited to persevere with. Now, going into the style and subtext of Simon Lang, the first thing we need to know, and I think is the most important element of understanding Simon Lang, is his lead actor, Li Kangsheng. He is Ming Lang's muse. He is in every film Simon Lang has ever made, and they work so well together through this bond that they have. And at times, Li Kangsheng is pushed by Tsai Ming Lang. There have been instances of where Tsai Ming Lang's had to slap him in the face for him to cry. There is tension at times, but they get the best out of each other, I think. And I think this is what the driving force of Tsai Ming Lang's work is. It truly focuses on this one human and the kind of different ideas and stories that Tsai Ming Lang has. He really focuses on isolation, on the sense of solitude. They can be hyper-erotic at times and they are very meditative. And this is kind of the main fundamental structure of Tsai Ming Lang's films. They always kind of weave from this idea. And I think this idea of being alone is the main motif that continuously goes through everything, even the shorts, even the mid-length feature films. We see it in No No Sleep, Journey to the West, we see it in Walker, Madam Butterfly. It is this sense of one person on a journey and what actually happens. But there is always a couple of characters that I think that really enhance the experience. 
And while I don't think sometimes there is this focal, Li Kang Sheng is just everything within these films. And I love this kind of idea of your muse is basically the catharsis for your art. And there is a massive sense of minimalism within Simon Lang's work. Like I said, dialogue at times is not as heavy. He lets scenes breathe a lot more. In the earlier films like Rebel of the Neon God, Vive L'Amour, these were these do have dialogue in it, don't get me wrong. Goodbye Dragon Inn is another one where we see a lot of discussion. But the thing is, it's the framing. The framing says everything. Words do not need to be said when you can frame like Simon Lang. You have a very long takes of people sitting down, of people just reflecting, looking through mirrors. Mirrors are very important in Simon Lang's films because we continuously see people judging themselves and reflecting upon what they do. And through this kind of idealism, it's kind of further accentuates this kind of sense of isolation. And Everything is canvassed beautifully and miraculously. He uses a lot of kind of suburban settings, the housing, everything like that can be, it has a sense of dystopianness to it at times, but focusing around Taipei has kind of really worked for him because you can see this evolution of Taipei also from his earlier films in the 90s moving forward. And I think that's kind of what makes him such a strong director because he really was a massive part in the second new wave in Taiwan and probably the most formidable because he's won the Berlin Alley, he's won at Venice, he's won multiple Golden Horses. This is what makes Simon Lang such a auteur of cinema. What you'll also notice within Simon Lang's films is that nature and water is very important in his films. Water is meant to be there, to be the mood setter at times, to make it feel bleak and eerie, but also it can be quite nourishing. And this kind of resemblance and symbolism is continuously shown within his films. I think most prominently you'll see it in maybe like Stray Dogs, Goodbye Dragon Inn, I think, well, The River also, of course. But this is the sense of where you see these parallels, Goodbye Dragon Inn, we see this cinema that's closing down, the rain is making it a lot more of a very sad kind of film, but we'll discuss this a little bit later. And then he continuously experiments, and I think as his career has gone along, he's basically felt a lot more comfortable in this like non-linear sense of cinema. And I think once we got to Stray Dogs in 2013, and then going into these short films, we see him playing with this lack of dialogue, and this lack of dialogue then has really kind of gone in full circle with Days. Once we got to Days, this is where we actually saw Simon Lang become... I think the artist that he wants to be, I think everything has kind of built up to this. And you see the evolution within all of his films. And honestly, this is what makes him a continuously changing artist, but also a refreshing one. I don't think I've ever been bored watching a Simon Lang film or a short because I'm so engrossed by what is going on on the screen. And this type of director really does not get the attention that he deserves at times. And eventually, I just hope that more people look at his films and see, wow, he really was at the foreground of filmmaking. And I think for the last 20 going on 30 years, he really is one of the best. Now moving to my recommendations for Simon Lang. The first one, of course, is the masterpiece of the considered magnum opus. And I found it very difficult to pick one because I do truly think that a lot of Simon Lang's films are masterpieces. And I went for Rebels of the Neon God. And while this is a debut, this is probably one of the most stunning debuts I have ever witnessed, ever. It really is a compelling, very intricate film that looks at the alienation of being young and kind of trying to find your feet within the world. And this film is very basic within its narrative, but what unfolds is this very organic development of Li Kang Sheng's character and how he is trying to figure out what is going on within his life. And yes, there's a lot of jealousy in this film, there's revenge. 
It has all the classic tropes of growing up and it's very intricately canvassed by Simon Lang through kind of canvassing Taipei as this kind of jungle that is exploring this adolescence that we are seeing. And this framing is very tight. It flows nicely, especially on the motorbikes. I love this kind of sense of freedom and liberation it has. And also it has a very interesting score. It's very synth heavy and it adds to the ambience and the mood. But this is his first film and to see kind of the parallels of how his first film is compared to his last, there is so much to kind of cipher and take out of it. But it really is a memorable opening film and Honestly, I do think potentially it's his best film, but at the same time, I'm sure my opinion of that will change as time goes by. This has been available on the Criterion channel for quite some time. I think it's not there at the moment, so just keep tabs, it usually just pops back. There is no proper Blu-ray release of this in the West. I know it's part of a Simon Lang box set over in Asia. And there is a French Blu-ray that will be coming out shortly, but no subtitles, I'm afraid. But once you can seek it, please go for it. Next up is my personal favourite. And for some people, this is not exactly their favourite, but it is mine. And that is The Way With Cloud. I love musicals in general. And you can tell Simon Lang loves musicals also in this film's face and the whole... There are musical segments also, but this is a full-blown musical that I truly loved. And it is very rejuvenating, and it's a very interesting kind of idea of looking at the state of mind of somebody, I think. I think in my head when I'm stressed and when I can't cope with things, I sing music in my head. And I think this kind of transition parallels what Simon Lang is about, because we again, we're looking at isolation, we're looking at people and the things that they go through and here this just bursts out into an MGM vintage style musical song and dance and I loved it I, I love how it just cascades life in very odd circumstances and builds into something so brash and bold and it's such a different change of course from Tsai Ming Lang it doesn't always feel like his type of film, but the tropes are there and this kind of homage to film, because there is, this is one thing, Simon Lang loves cinema and this is his homage to the classic 1940s and 50s song and dance numbers of, of the West. I love this grand noir human connection of it. And it really just maintains this beautiful pacing and you won't look at watermelons the same way ever again. And Li Kang Sheng is kind of like a mermaid at the end of it, so it becomes even weirder. I know that this has a DVD in the United Kingdom. It has a couple of DVDs across the world. It's quite pricey because it's out of print. I don't own it personally. Usually Way With Cloud is a movie favorite and it is on movie right now. So if you want to give <laughs> The Way With Cloud a go, feel free, but I personally do love this film. Now, to my third choice, and this is the most accessible all-rounder film from Simon Lang, which is a hybrid of all the things that make Simon Lang him. And I had to go for Goodbye Dragon Inn. I think this is the ultimate homage to cinema. This shows the cinematic experience and the way it makes us feel. And it's something that I miss dearly right now. I don't think I've been to the cinema since, I don't know, September of last year, maybe. I, I miss it. It's everything in my life. And this is what I love about Goodbye Dragon Inn. It connects with the cinephiles of the world. And it's set in this crumbling down cinema it's going to be one of the last days it's pouring down with rain and these spectators are going in to watch a film and i love the still framing i love the tears coming down the eyes. i just enjoy the enjoyment that this film has and at this point in time just like days all these people connect together and this connection of their love for something or that sense of wanting to feel something is there and it is beautifully framed. I love this film to death. 
This is a Blu-ray that came out from Second Run. This is a new restoration of the film, so it is accessible. If you have not seen this, this is probably your best entry point into Simon Lang, and I would highly encourage you to watch it. Right, that is the end of this video. I hope that my ramblings and recommendations have helped you kind of figure out your way into the world of Simon Lang, and I hope that you do. And let me know how your journey goes and keep me posted. I love seeing some of my subscribers in their Hong Sang Su journeys at the moment. Some of you are quite new to it. So I'm really enjoying seeing the development and this is kind of the reason that this why these videos exist. If you don't agree with me with my picks, let me know what your favorite Simon Lang films are in the comments section below and I look forward to hearing from you. Next up on this channel, there will be some reviews from Glasgow Film Festival, Berlin Film Festival, including Hong Sang Su's latest film introduction. So please stay tuned for that. Thank you very much to my new subscribers and thank you very much to my old subscribers. Your support means a lot to me right now and he keeps growing on the channel. So thank you, and I hope you're all doing well. And as we normally say on this channel, Dio Danker, Obrigado, Merci beaucoup, Arigato, Dankeschön, Bitteschön, all the shins, and obviously, never change. Bye.